Um, without any further ado, I'd like to hand over to Tom. Thank you very much. Is the, uh, I don't think, is the microphone on? Yeah. Cool, perfect. All right. So, yes, so I'm Tom. I'm one of the founders of Whole Grain Digital. And um, I'm going to talk to you about how to win, win big name clients, but specifically how to win big name clients with love. There's lots of people who could tell you how to win big name clients in many different ways. Um, but this is sort of our, our unique flavor of that. Um, a little bit about Whole Grain Digital. And um, how do I flick this on? Okay, so a little bit about Holgren Digital. Uh, we founded in 2007, so we've been going for about nine years, and we're a specialist WordPress agency. It's grown organically. We're based in London, but we've got people all over the world, as far away as China and Brazil, working remotely. And the reason that this presentation is focused on how to win big name clients with love is because love is really at the heart of everything that's happened at Holgren. The reason the company exists is because of that. Vanita and I actually founded the company simply because we fell in love and we wanted to find a way that we could spend all of our time together. Um, so we thought, let's start a company. <laughs> Turned out it wasn't quite, quite as easy as that, but it's worked out pretty good. You know, nine years later, we're doing all right. And, um, and then we chose to specialize in WordPress, again, because of love. We started off, we were doing design, different things, you know, websites with Joomla and Magento, static HTML. And, to be honest, you know, Vanita and I, we're not coders, we're sort of designers really, and we didn't really like them, and our clients didn't really like them, and then my brother introduced us to WordPress, and we just fell in love with it straight away. It, it just, it, it's such an empowering piece of technology. It made us feel like we could do so much that we just couldn't do before. Um, and when we gave it to our clients, they felt the same way. It really empowered them to do more. They felt like they were in control of their own website. They understood how it worked. Um, and so our clients loved it. We loved it. And that's really you know, how Whole Grain Digital came about as a specialist WordPress agency. We wanted to start a company. We didn't really know what we were doing or why we were doing it, um, apart from the fact that we were just trying to spend time together by working together. Um, and then we fell in love with WordPress. And, and the rest is history. So. We've been really lucky. Nobody in our team really knows that much about sales, to be honest. So um, <laughs> if you're looking for a sort of typical sales expert, I'm not it. But somehow, over nine years, we've managed to get some really good big name clients. Um, and you know, s people like Marks and Spencer's, Right Move, and some really, really wholesome organizations as well, like Solar Century, Ecova, UNICEF, just really great people to work with. Um, and so a lot of people come up to me from all walks of life and say, you know, how do you win your big name clients? This is the thing a lot of people want to know. And generally, I tell people, like, I don't really know, because that's, that's kind of true. But I sat down and spent a lot of time thinking about this, and that's what I'm going to explain. So first of all, I'm going to tell you what we don't do. The first thing we do is we don't hire salespeople. So if you're a salesperson, like, this is no offense. Um, Salespeople do amazing work, but we've just never really gone down that route. And there's a reason why. It's nothing about salespeople, it's about the process of sales. And there's an inherent conflict of interest. When you give people sales targets and you give them sales commissions, you create this conflict of interest that their motivate, their driving force is to sell things to the client, whether they need them or not, whether it's a fair price or not. And then selling things that maybe actually your team isn't right for, clients that don't fit with you well, promising things that maybe you can't even deliver. Um, so there's, there's like multiple conflicts of interest when you start having a sales team or salesperson that's driven by those targets, driven by those commissions. So everything that we've done in terms of sales is really just happens organically and naturally through discussion with the clients. Um, we don't advertise. We've, been, you know, we've never really done any pay-per-click. Or The closest we get to advertising is, is me standing here talking to you guys. Um, we don't bid for tenders. Nothing wrong with bidding for tenders. I think in the future, probably we will bid for tenders. We're just rubbish at it. We have an amazing track record of coming second every single time. Um, <laughs> but if you bid for a tender, you know, it takes you days and days and days of work to bid for a tender application for a you know, government project or a big company. And, and basically, if, unless you know how to tick all those boxes, you're not going to win it. Second is worth zero. 
Um, and also, Fabio Tolini, you know, he gave a great presentation, Fabio from WP Engine, he gave a great presentation last year, and he was talking about uh, tender applications, and he said, unless you already know that you're in their sort of, their, their preferred suppliers list, that, that you're in their top two, then there's, there's really no point, you know, that they've already know roughly who they're going to go for, unless you do something to really blow their socks off. Um, and then you're just going to put in like a week of work putting together a proposal that, that they don't really care about. Um, we don't go networking, nothing wrong with networking, but, you know, we don't go out to events with the objective of trying to meet people and, and, and get, get sales off them and things like that. Networking is really just like coming to WordCamp and, and hanging out with nice people. That, that's really all it is. Um, and, and we don't pay for referrals. So again, this comes back to this conflict of interest that if you're paying people for referrals, then they're going to recommend you whether they think you're the right fit or not. They're going to send you clients that really you shouldn't be working with. Um, and at the end of the day, you want people to refer you because you're good, not because they're going to give you money. You're going to give them money for it. Um, and you're kind of going behind your client's back. If you're paying people to refer you, they, they trust that person to refer somebody that's good. And then you're kind of passing money under the table. So it seems like you're starting off the relationship with that client on a slightly dishonest note. So that's why we don't pay for referrals. So where do our clients find us? And it's really just these three places. It's word of mouth, it's organic search, and it's repeat business. And this is really important to emphasize, because actually, like in the early days, we basically didn't have any customers. Um, and you know, we could have gone out doing sales, and you know, maybe in that early phase, you know, you've got to do something to drum up business. But once you get going, actually, you shouldn't really, unless you want to grow really, really fast, and, and we're more happy sort of growing organically, you shouldn't really need to be like pushing the sales that hard and doing loads and loads of advertising. Word of mouth and repeat business is, especially in WordPress, which is like, you know, it's growing in popularity, there's tons of demand. Um, that in itself is enough to grow your business. And, and so how you win big name clients is largely not just about how you get new clients, but how you keep your existing clients happy, how you make them love you, so that not only do they come back and they want to work with you more, but they tell other companies about you who then want to work with you. Um, and similarly, repeat business, people always think this is about getting more work from the same company. It's often about getting more work from the same person. So you might work with a marketing manager in a big company, and they hired you for a project, and then they leave that company, and they go to another company, and they have a great relationship with you, and they want to continue that relationship into their new job. So then you actually, that's your foot in the door with, with that other big company. So that, that's the sort of thing that's, that's, that's worked really well for us. So, so how do we win our big name clients? And it sounds really cheesy, but love is the answer. So <laughs> you've got to love yourself. Um, basically, nobody hires somebody who doesn't have any confidence in themselves. And, and we know this because, you know, when you start your own business, you go in these sort of peaks and troughs of confidence. Sometimes you feel like, yeah, we can do this. We, we really believe in ourselves. And, and, and someone actually hires you, and you just think, wow, this is a miracle. Um, and then there's other days when you just think, we're so rubbish, you know? Like, no one's ever going to hire us, and no one hires you on that day. Like, so unless you really trust yourself and believe in yourself, um, no one's going to hire you. So start with loving yourself, and then as you build a team around you, you know, you've got to love that team. You've got to really have faith in them. You hire, there's a reason why you hired them. You hired them because you think they're great people. You think they're talented. You know that they're brilliant at what they do and that they're trustworthy, and you know that they care about your clients. And, and that really brings on to the important part, which is loving your clients. Because sometimes, you know, as an agency or even as a freelancer, you can have a sort of awkward relationship with your clients. You know, sometimes you don't necessarily agree with them, or there's awkward things in terms of payment terms, all sorts of awkwardness. Um, but you've always got to look at them from the point of view that ultimately you love them, because without them, you would not exist. Your business would not exist. Your livelihood would not exist. And these exciting projects that you're working on would not exist. So you've always got to keep that in mind that you love your clients and hope that your team also you know, really shares that love of the clients. And then, and then love the world, because people trust people that care about stuff, that care about more than just money. Um, and they might not really care about the things that you care about, but it, it shows integrity. So I'll go into a few, a few specifics. So the first of these is listen. So any good relationship, really, you know, listening is the foundation of any good relationship, whether it's a business relationship 
or a personal relationship. And clients love people who listen. It's so, it's so easy to go into a client and think, like, I'm the expert, that's why they're hiring me, and I'm just going to tell them what they need. But actually, to know what they need, you've got to sit down and spend time with them and really listen to what they need, listen to what they're saying. Because it might not be obvious. They might not be you know, the same as the last client you worked with, and they're almost certainly not. Um, treat them as humans. So this is, this is really specific. This is true with all clients, but it's really specific. When you, go with, when you move from sort of working with small businesses to working with bigger companies, a lot of people, they kind of they look up to them and think like somehow they're different because they're, they're from a big company and they've got fancy titles. And at the end of the day, everybody's a human. So the way that you engage with those people in big companies really doesn't need to be any different from the way you engage with, with you know, a one-man band because they're a human. They want you to treat them like a human. They want you to treat them like an equal. And if you, start, if you look up to them and you, you, you treat them in that way, you create an imbalance in the relationship where actually that they might end up thinking you're not very good because because you think they're so much above you whereas actually you know like like a relationship if you're married you're equals and you're working together to create something better so treat them as humans treat them as equals um, and they'll really like working with you treat everyone well um, and it sounds obvious but whatever the circumstances are just treat people well and sometimes this might mean you know, awkward circumstances where maybe, maybe you actually don't like working with a client and you, and you, you don't want to work with them anymore. Um, but your reputation depends on everybody respecting you, even when things get tough. So you, know, you might have situations where you have to get rid of a client, but handle it in a nice way, whereby actually you explain to them why you're doing it and why it's actually probably best for them as well as you. Um, and they might go away from those awkward situations actually having more respect for you than they did before. Um, be honest. So honesty is really, really important. And I think particularly, you know, I don't think this is really true so much in the WordPress world, but maybe in the wider agency, agency world, you know, honesty is, is something that clients struggle to get from an agency because partly, and we're going back to the sales thing in terms of people just want to sell them stuff and they're really scared that people are just going to flog them, whatever they can get, whatever is the most expensive thing they can, they can sell them. So honesty is really the foundation of earning these, winning these big name clients. And, and often that means admitting your own flaws. So when, when clients talk to an agency, every agency wants to say they're brilliant. Every agency wants to say they're perfect. And if you're a small agency like Holgrain and you're bid, bidding, bidding against bigger, more established um, agencies, saying that you're perfect doesn't really work because they know that probably you don't have the resources that the bigger agencies have. You don't have the experience that the bigger agencies have. Um, but they also know that you're probably really, really good at some things. And by admitting your own flaws, by s admitting what you're not good at, you're earning trust that the things you say that you are good at, you are actually good at that. And if they're going to hire you they're probably only going to hire you for that specific thing. Like you're not going to take over like the entire management of like Marks and Spencer's IT system. You know they're going to go to a massive company like Capita that has the resources and the infrastructure to do that. But if they want a specific niche project that's focused in your skill set, then by actually admitting that like please don't hire us for that stuff, we're rubbish at it. But this stuff, this is what we do day in day out. Um, they buy into that and they can see how actually the specialism. Um, or of you as a small agency, it really has value for them. Um, so related to honesty is just admitting your own mistakes. I think every agency, every designer, developer makes mistakes. You know, like we don't do every project perfectly. And, but when you do screw up, you can actually come out of that either by losing a client, you can come out with a damaged reputation, or you can come out with a better client relationship and that client stays with you for, for years afterwards and does more work with you. It's all about how you handle it and just putting your hand up and saying, we screwed up, we're really sorry, this is what happened, we've learned from our mistakes, we're going to put it right and we're going to work our socks off to put it right and give you what you need. It really earns their respect and you know, we've had clients who we have screwed up their projects, you know, I'm not going to say we haven't, but it's 
it's in the minority of cases. And when it does happen, those clients often end up being our best long-term clients because they know that actually, you know, we're going to stick by them. Um, sell less. So this comes back to salespeople. Um, clients fear that the agency is just going to try and sell them things that they don't need. And often, we downsell clients. So a client might come in and they say, look, this is what we think we need. And we've got a budget of £25,000 and... You know, they're almost laying it on a plate for you. And we go through the requirements, we listen to what they need, and we say, no, that, that's not what you need. Maybe you only need to spend five or ten thousand pounds. Or maybe you don't need to spend any money with us at all. You can do this yourself. We're going to tell you what you need to do. You go away and do it. And we, you're turning down money on a plate. But, but then you've built a really strong relationship with that client. They really trust you, they really respect you. And they still got that money in their marketing budget. So once they've done that thing that you told them how to do themselves or, or you've done that smaller project and they didn't need to spend that full budget, they often come back and they say, well, actually, we've got these other ideas we've been thinking about and we've got this money left in our budget. How about we do that together? And we, we've won a lot of big name clients by downselling rather than upselling. Um, be helpful. So just go out of your way to be helpful when there's nothing in it for you. So I think we're all trying to be helpful as agencies when we know that like, we've promised the client something and we wanted to give them a really good service. But sometimes there just is nothing in it for you. And you know, a good example of that is like hosting. We don't sell hosting. Um, but we give our clients a huge amount of free advice about hosting. We don't charge them for the time. We just care about the fact that hosting is so important, they need to be on a really good hosting solution that's specific for their needs. And often they just don't have a clue because that's not their skill set either. And we, we can guide them through that process and they really appreciate the help. And you know, that helps facilitate a really strong relationship with them. Um, do your best. So always give 100% even if you think it isn't good enough. And even if you think that the client isn't worth it, and I think this is really important to stress because you know, sometimes you end up with clients where you, maybe you misquoted them or you misunderstood them or you, you just didn't know what they were like to work with or, or you, you kind of had that gut feeling that maybe we, shouldn't, maybe we shouldn't take on this client but then you, for some reason you did and then you realize after the event that nah, no, actually, gut feeling was right. We sh it, we're not the right fit. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't give it 100%. You know, they've hired you, you promised them 100%. So you give them 100%, and that might mean that at the end of the project, you sit down with them and you have a really frank conversation about, you know, how did it go? How was it happy? Do we want to continue to do more together? But if you always give them 100% of your best effort, of what you've promised them, they'll respect you for it. And even if they don't choose to work with you again, they might recommend you to other people and say, look, they weren't the right fit for us, but for you guys, they'd be brilliant. And that, you know, so doing your best is really important. And I think I mentioned this a minute ago, but don't give up on them. Perseverance counts for a lot. And when you do really complex projects, there are always things that you just didn't see coming. Um, and particularly in terms of technical challenges. And when you really stick, stick at it and give it everything that it takes to to get through those challenges, get through those dips and come out the other side, those clients really appreciate it. And that's part of the reason they go to an agency, um, because they trust that actually there's resilience in an agency. It's a team, and it doesn't matter what happens. That team is somehow going to find a way of meeting the requirements and, and delivering their needs. And a lot of clients, especially if they've bigger companies, they've Maybe they've worked with freelancers or contractors before. You know, you, they could hire a contractor and he might be brilliant, but then he might drop out and their project's just stranded. Or they might hire a freelancer and then he falls sick or he drops off the radar. One of the reasons companies go to agencies is because of that resilience, that they believe in the power of the team and that they're going to get through. You know, it's easy to do a project when everything's simple, but they want to know that you're going to get through the hard times and you're going to come out the other side and... Um, deliver what they wanted. So if you can prove that to them, they'll stick with you for their next project. Um, so forgive them. Um, clients are never perfect, and you need to accept their weaknesses. So there's loads of things that clients don't know about websites, and I think sometimes we can get frustrated that you know they, they don't give us their content on time, or they don't understand how things work. But actually, that's not their job to know these things. That's our job. 
and it's not our, they accept our weaknesses. So we have to accept theirs and work with them and realize that if we can focus on overcoming their weaknesses, they will, they'll enjoy working with us. It'll be a pleasure to work with us and, um, and we won't have that frustration. You know, it'll just be a sort of more zen, enjoyable project for everybody. Um, don't use jargon. I think we all use jargon because it's just kind of the industry we work in that we, we don't even realize it's jargon. And we use things like UI and UX and IA and we're like, yeah, we know what they mean. But, but a lot of clients, they just don't have a clue what you're talking about. And some of them, they won't say it. They won't tell you that they don't know what you're talking about. They'll just be confused and they'll just go away and maybe they'll end up hiring somebody else because they had a meeting with you or a call with you and they just, they're like, I don't know what that guy's talking about. I'm going to hire these other guys because I understand them. So you want to be those other guys who they understand, who talk to them in their own language. And sometimes their own language might mean using jargon. Sometimes you get clients that come in and they're using jargon that even you don't understand. And you've got to Google it and try and figure out what they're saying. But just talk to them in their own language and they'll really, they'll feel like you're on the same wavelength that, and, and they'll want to work with you. Um, so treat them as a partner. I think it's very easy to have a sort of an attitude of us and them. You know, they're the client, we're the agency, and, and you're like two separate teams. But it's very important, I think, for like really healthy um, web design and development work that actually you look at it as like, no, this is one project. So there's one team, and there's people from your company on the project, and there's people from our company on the project. And we're all, we're all working on this together. And a lot of clients, you know, that, that they really like that when you make that clear up front, that it's not, they're not outsourcing it to you. They're collaborating with you on the project. Um, surprise them. So like in any relationship, you know, surprise, a surprise gesture is sometimes the best way to tell people that you love them. So, you know, this could be, you know, simple things like just sending a client some chocolates when you really enjoying working with them or something. Or it might mean doing some work that, you know, you, you had an idea that you thought, they're going to love this. We're going to build this little thing for them. It's only going to take us like one or two hours. But we won't ask them if they want it and then quote them for it. We'll just do it and we'll give it to them because they're a good client and we think it's you know, a nice thing to do. And, you know, and they'll love you for it. Um, so care about more than just money. I think it's easy when you're running a business of any kind to sort of forget about the bigger picture of, of what you're doing and why you're doing it and, and just focus on you know, revenue. We've got to make money, we've got to make profit. Um, but actually, when you, when you think about that bigger picture, it's often, you can earn respect from the client. So you'll have a better relationship with the client because you put the client relationship first rather than money first, but also just caring about other things. So caring about the wider world, caring about the environment or human rights or whatever it is you're interested in, it shows the client that, that you're good people, that you care about things. And even if they don't really care about that stuff, they, they'll at least look at you guys and think, well, you know, they're trustworthy, they're in, they've got integrity. Um, so I'm going to trust them with my money and with my project and with, and with their reputation. Um, similarly, share your passions. So this comes back to what I was saying about how they treat them as humans, that it's very easy to think that a professional relationship needs to be very dry and you just talk about business and you talk shop. But actually, if you share your passions, both on an individual human level, um, you can really start to get to know them as people. And that's why when they move to, the, to their new job in another company, they take you with them. It's not just because you did great work for them. It's because they actually enjoyed working with you as as people, and they got on with you. Um, so, so that's really important. Um, and it also attracts clients to you. So if clients see that you're passionate about something, those people within those companies might think, well, I want to work with these guys because I'm interested in the same sorts of things they, they're interested in. I like the same sort of things that they like. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up the phone and I'm going to call them. I'm going to have a chat with them because I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a nice experience working with them because we're all on the same page. So it gets clients in the door who are actually the type of clients that you want to work with because they're actually interested in the same things that you're interested in. And, and then it keeps them because they enjoy working with you. Um, and then build a wholesome brand. So 
anything that you do that's positive in your organization, just try to communicate this positive attitude at every touch point. So it's not just about when you meet the client, you know, being nice to them and having a good conversation with them and listening to them. It's about the way that you present your brand through your website, through the things you put on Twitter, even things like terms and conditions. Like we had terms and conditions that had been written by had been written by a, a solicitor that was a friend of ours a few years back, and we didn't really look at them. They're just terms and conditions, they're sort of legal things we don't care about. And they were actually really one-sided. They were really arsy and they were really hard to understand. And one of our clients complained about this. And, um, and we had never really realized. And we read our own terms and conditions and we thought, my goodness, this is horrible. Um, so we just rewrote them. And you know, they're probably legally completely rubbish now. But, <laughs> but, but clients really like them because they've just been written by a human and they just explain that this is in no jargon. This is what it means and this is why we're doing it. And it's fair for you and it's fair for us. And um, yeah, so, so building a wholesome brand at every touch point, even those touch points that you wouldn't really think of, it really helps, helps win you those clients. Because you can lose a client at the point of sending them your terms and conditions. They've already agreed to the project and then they're like, no, I'm not signing this. So uh, all of those things are important. So to sum up, um, to win big name clients with love, you've got to be a good lover. So you need to be caring, you need to be passionate, you need to be reliable but also spontaneous from time to time. You should always be honest. You need to always be yourself. Don't try to pretend that your agency is something that it's not. Um, and remember that money can't buy love. So winning big name clients is about building strong relationships with them and all good relationships are based on love. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much, Tom. And we'll open up to the floor now if there are any questions. Extra services and uh, going back to the first slides that you uh, put up. So when a project comes to an end, generally it sometimes becomes clear that a client's uh, completely underestimated the uh, need for a support and maintenance contract retain or whatever you're going to uh, discuss with them uh, uh, until potentially even the launch of the site. Yeah. And it's, it's never really been tabled. Potentially you've assume that they had help elsewhere. How do you go about selling that, which is, as we all know, a, a, a solid requirement for a WordPress site, which is going to need a lot of maintenance going forward, without actually coming across as though you are just trying to get more money out of them? Yeah, so, I mean, I think part of it is having that conversation at the beginning and explaining to them why maintenance is important for WordPress. And I think particularly, it's, it's difficult having that conversation about security because you don't want to scare them away from WordPress right at the beginning by talking about the fact that there are potential you know, risks associated with it. Um, but I think if you have a really frank conversation and you explain that basically there are risks, these are what they are, but if you manage those risks, there's nothing to worry about. And this is why we're recommending that after the launch of your site, you know, we'll give you this maintenance plan and these are the things that we'll do to ensure that everything's safe. And you're very transparent about that. A lot of clients respect it. And a lot of clients look at what you're saying in the maintenance plan and they'll say, well, OK, well, those are things we could do ourselves. And you might, you might say, OK, well, if you're confident you can do it yourselves, you know, that's fine. Have a go at it. But if you need help, we're here to help. And sometimes you know, they go away, they try it for a few months, and they actually can do it themselves, and that's fine. Sometimes they go away for a few months, and then they realize, you know what, no one's updated anything, no one's looked at anything actually that maintenance plan you're talking about. And you can give them a friendly nudge and say, hey, guys, we've noticed you haven't updated anything. Um, this is why we've recommended the maintenance plan. Would you, would you like to talk about it again? Cheers. And I think I saw a hand at the back. Any hands at the back? Yes. Can you pass that down? Uh, thanks. As Firstly, I just wanted to kind of affirm what you said uh, from the point of view of the client. Um, we, uh, I represent the Church of England for a lot of kind of national 
uh, kind of interesting projects. And um, we consistently and increasingly have worked with a, a digital agency called Blanc because they, um, in a similar way to yours, they've, yeah. they've got that uh, kind of single client, kind of, um, in a way, small scale mentality that is more based on um, their ethics and the way that they, they work um, with us. And they've demonstrated that they're not all about the money, which has yeah. meant that we're able to, to forge a really strong relationship. Um, so I just wanted to kind of affirm that point. Um, secondly, so my question to you is, um, with a company like Blanc or Whole Grain, from the start, from the, from the get-go, it was kind of baked in this idea of it's not about making money, it's about something bigger than that. Yeah. It's about the kind of simplicity beyond that complexity. For, if you're working for a digital agency for which that n is not the case, where do you begin? Is it something you can retrofit? Um, from the point of view of somebody who works in the agency or from the agency owner's point of view? Uh, for, it would be harder for someone who works in the agency, yeah. so that, that situation. Yeah, I, if you're I the think owner, then you can kind of... If you work in the agency, then I think really you've just got to think about your own role as being to deliver service to the client and good service to the client. It may be more difficult if you're in that sales role where you've got sales targets and you've got sales commissions. And, you know, I think that's, that's a personal choice about what sort of role you want to be in. Yeah. But if you're in, you know, if you're in design and development or project management, um, then then I think actually you probably shouldn't be worrying too much about the sales targets and, and that sort of things, and you're probably not getting commission anyway. So your focus should just be on delivering great service to the client and, and hope that that means that the client will love you and they'll come back for more and that your managers will, will see that and that they'll, they'll reward you for it. Cool, thank you. So if you're in that kind of situation like Joe McGuire, you go for that whole thing of just leaving the agency and like setting up yeah. small scale. Hello. Is there anything specific you do to communicate your values with your staff? So that especially when new people join, I'm sure it's part of the recruitment itself, but how do you continually reinforce your ethics and values with the rest of the company? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I think, I think largely it's, it's really just about maintaining an, an open dialogue with people. And some of that's just talking to people about how we, how we treat with it how we treat a certain client or how we should behave on a certain project. Um, some of that's explaining things when people are recruited about you know, what the company stands for. Um, and some of it's just like little things, like on Slack, we've got channels that are not to do with business. So we, we've, got like a, we've got a random channel where people post things that they're interested in. And often those things have some sort of, sort of ethical slant. And then we've got a controversy channel where people post things that are slightly you know, out there, but maybe in line with their personal beliefs and things like that. And so it, it's just little details about cre creating a sort of a positive and open culture in, in everything that you do. Yeah. Have we got any more questions? OK, fantastic. Love that. Fantastic uh, marketing uh, pointers all round. Um, my question is, did you go out of your way to win the bigger name clients? And how did it just take off? Yeah, so, I mean, this is kind of what I was saying at the beginning, that there's nobody in our team who's really sales-focused as such. There's no, nobody with a sales and marketing background. Um, and that's why when people ask me, how, did you win, how do you win your big-name clients, my first thought is I'm not really sure, because we didn't actually ever go out of our way to win them, we, as in to get them in the door in the first place. Most of, most of those big-name clients came to us. They either came to us because they found us on Google, or they came to us because somebody recommended us to them. So it's really a case of just developing a really good reputation with those smaller companies that we started off with you know, years ago. And gradually, as our reputation grew, bigger companies started to hear about us. Um, and similarly, you know, in, in terms of our online presence, you know, when, when those bigger companies are looking for WordPress specialists, they, they find us and then Hopefully, our website communicates our values as well as just the services that we offer. And so a lot of those big companies, you know, they get in contact with us because, because they like the look of who we are. Simple as that. Yeah. Okay, I think that's it. A big hand uh, for Tom. What a great talk. <laughs>